Okay class, today we're in section 2.5, solve equations with variables on both sides. Solve equations with variables on both sides. Before, you solved equations with variables on one side. Now, you will solve equations with variables on both sides. Key vocabulary, identity. Some equations have variables on both sides. To solve such equations, you can, you can collect the variable terms on one side of the equation and the constant terms on the other side of the equations. Once again, to solve such equations, you can collect the variable term on one side of the equation and the constant terms on the other side of the equation. Example 1. Solve an equation with variables on both sides. Solve 7 minus 8x is equal to 4x minus 17. Okay, write the original equation. 7 minus 8x is equal to 4x minus 17. Next, add 8x to each side. We got a negative 8x, so, so to move it, we're going to add 8x to each side. So I'm going to say plus 8x plus 8x. When we do that, the 8x's are gone. They cancel out right there, and we're left with just 7. So we're going to simplify on this side. So we got 4x plus 8x, that's equal to 12x. And we bring that negative 17 down. Now we're going to put all the constant terms, or just the numbers by themselves, on the same side. So we're going to move this 17 to the other side. That's why they say add 17 to each side. It's a negative 17, 17. so to it we're going to add a 17. So plus 17 goes there, and a plus 17 goes there. Of course, you would be showing this in your work. A plus 17 there and a plus 17 there. Now you got a negative 17 and a positive 17. They're going to cancel out. And you're just left with 12x. On this side, you got 7 plus 17. That's going to be 24. So now you got 24 is equal to 12 times x. Now you're going to divide both sides by 12. So divide by 12 here and divide by 12 there. And you end up with x is equal to 2. All right, now for those of us who may be a bit confused, we're going to explain the problem again in more detail. Now, your overall goal is this. You must get all the variables. See these two variables? You must combine them and get them on one side. Then you want to get the constants, that 7 and that negative 17. You want them on one side uh, while combining them at the same time. All right, now here's a general rule. To get the variables on one side, you move the smallest variable first. You move the smallest variable first. You do this because it saves you uh, an extra step or two. Move the smallest variable first. So we're going to say a negative 8 and a negative 4, which is smaller than negative 8. So to get rid of it, I must add an 8x. And when I do to one side, I must do to the other side. Add the 8x. Draw my line. And then I add going down. 7 plus 0 is 7. There's nothing there. A negative 8, when combined with a positive 8, that goes to 0. On the other side, I got 4x plus 8x. Bring my equal sign down. That's going to give me 12x. And, of course, I bring down that negative 17. Now, the 12x, the x term, I want that on one side. So, therefore, this must go. The negative 17 must go. All right, so to get rid of the negative 17, I'm going to add 17. And I'm going to add 17. Draw my line. Now, 7 plus 17 is 24. Yours should be written right up under there. And then uh, a negative 17, when combined with a positive 17, that goes to 0. So now I got 24 is equal to... 12x. Now I got 12 times x is equal to 24, or I can read it as 24 is equal to 12x. At any rate, I want to get this x by itself. So now what's the opposite of multiplication? Division. Divide both sides by 12, and then 24 divided by 12 is equal to 2. 12 divided by 12, that's 1, so I'm left with just 1x. So my answer is x is equal to 2. 
Now, we can solve this very same problem by moving the 4x first. But most of the time, by using a bigger variable, that's another way of saying it. But most of the time, when we do that, it's going to cause us, cause us an extra step or two. All right, let's go through and take a look at it to be sure you understand what we're talking about. All right, so now I'm going to move the 4x first. So I'm going to say this is a positive 4x. I'm going to say a minus 4x here and a minus 4x there. Draw my line. 7 plus 0 is 7. A negative uh, 8x plus a negative 4x would give me a negative 12x. Okay, and then that's going to equal to 4x minus 4x. That's going to cancel out. And I'm going to end up with a negative 17. Now this time, my variable term is on the left-hand side. So now the number I want to get rid of it is the 7. I want to move that 7 over. So this is a positive 7. So I'm going to say minus 7 on this side. And over here I'm going to say minus 7 on that side. All right, now what's 7 minus 7? That's 0, so that's gone. Now I got a negative 12x is equal to a negative 24. Now I'm going to divide through by a negative 12. Divide through by a negative 12. Now what's a negative 12 divided by a negative 12? That's going to be 1. So I'm going to have x is equal to uh, a negative 24 divided by a negative 12 is it's going to be a positive 2. Now, in this case, it didn't cost us an extra step, but did you, did you notice how? You have to worry about negative signs all the way through. All the way through, you have to worry about negatives. Whereas here, everything remains positive. And in general, it's easier to work with an equation when it's positive as opposed to when it's negative. But you got to know how to do both anyway. This is for those of us who may have started off with a different step. But as you can see, the results, if you do the problem correctly, the results should be exactly the same. Example 2, solve an equation with grouping symbols. We got 9x minus 5 is equal to 1 fourth times 16x plus 60. 9x minus 5 is equal to 1 fourth parentheses times 16x plus 60 close parentheses. Step 1, write the original equation. 9x minus 5 is equal to 1 fourth times 16x plus 60. Next, we're going, we're going to use the distributive property. So we're going to distribute that 1 fourth all the way through. That means that the 1 fourth has to be multiplied by 16, and then the 1 fourth has to be multiplied by that 60. That means we have to know how to multiply using fractions. If not, we're in trouble. So I'm going to show for those who don't know 1 fourth times 16 over 1. 1 times 16 is 16, 4 times 1 is 4, and then 16 divided by 4 is 4. That's how we came out with the 4x. 1 fourth times 16x is 4x. Now i got to say 1 fourth times 60 times 60 over 1. All right. I'm going to end up with 1 times 4, or excuse me, 1 times 60, that's 60. 4 times 1, that's 4. 60 divided by 4 is 15. That's how they got that 15. And notice, did not explain to you, did not explain this to, to you in any, any kind of way. You, you must know how to solve a problem. All right, now, so we got 9x minus 5 is equal to 4x plus 15. Now we're solving an equation with variables on both sides. Now we're solving an equation with variables on both sides. So now which variable do I move? I'm going to move the smallest variable. I got 9x and I got 4x. So I'm going to say minus 4x and then minus 4x. All right, now, what's 9x minus 4x? That's 5x. 
I bring down the negative 5. 4x minus 4x, that's 0. So now that cancels out. And then I bring down the positive 15. So now I have 5x minus 5 is equal to 15. Now I'm working with a two-step equation. Multiplication, subtraction. So I'm going to add 5 to each side. Plus 5, plus 5. Plus 5, plus 5. A negative 5 and a positive 5, that's going to go to 0. So that's gone. So right here then, I have the plus 5. And right here, I have the plus 5. Okay, so now that's going to cancel out. I'm left with just 5x. Negative 5 plus 5, that goes to 0. So I'm left with just 5x. 15 plus 5 is equal to 20. So now what do I have left? 5 times x is equal to 20. Divide each side by 5. All right, 5 divided by 5 is 1, so I'm left with just 1x, and then 20 divided by 5 is 4. So my answer is x is equal to 4. Notice they're no longer showing you each and every step along the way. The distributive property, you have to know how to do it. We learned that early in your school year. Uh, knowing to subtract 4x from each side, they're not showing you that. You have to know how to do that. Add 5 to each side, they're not showing you that. You have to know how to do that and divide these side by five, they're not showing you that. You have to know how to do that. In other words, what was once an entire lesson is now a step. You had an entire lesson on distributive property. You had an entire lesson on how to solve a two-step equation. You had an entire lesson on how to solve a one-step equation. So once again, what used to be a lesson is now a step. That's why it's important to show all your work when you are doing your problems and to learn everything sincerely. Example three, solve a real world problem. Car sales. A car dealership sold 78 new cars and 67 used cars this year. The number of new cars sold by the dealership has been increasing by six cars each year. The number of used cars sold by the dealership has been decreasing by four cars each year. If these trends continue, in how many years will the number of new cars sold be twice the number of used cars sold? Solution. Let x represent the number of years from now. So, 6x represents the increase in the number of new cars sold over x years, and a negative 4x represents the decrease in the number of used cars sold over X years. Write a verbal model. New cars sold this year, 78, plus increase in new cars sold over X years, 6X. That equals two times used cars sold this year, 67, plus decrease in used cars sold over X years a negative 4x. So our equation is going to be 78 plus 6x is equal to 2 times 67 minus 4x. We're going to apply the distributive property. 2 times 67 is 134. 2 times a negative 4x is 8x. Now we solve an equation with variables on both sides. I got a positive 6x and I got a negative 8, 8x. Which one do I move? I move the smaller one, the negative 8x. That's why they say add 8x to each side. So plus 8x here and plus 8x there. Plus 8x here, plus 8x there. All right, so I bring down my 78. Now 6x plus that 8x, 8x that you should be writing down, 6x plus that 8x is equal to 14x. A negative 8x when combined with a positive 8x goes to 0, so we end up with just 134. So I'm left with so I'm left with 78 plus 14x is equal to 134. Now I subtract 78 from each side. After doing so, I end up with 14x is equal to 56. And my final answer is going to be x is equal to 4 after dividing both sides by 14. 
14 here, 14 there. 